You hear that, dude? What's your new sweater? New sweater. What's the verdict on it? Is it, it is it ugly or is it pretty? Beautiful. A little bit of in, internal conflict. That's Pro Gamakatsu trying to decide if it's ugly or not. Tell us what we're doing today. Today we're out here just doing a little bit of fall fishing. You know, I got my actual box. So I've been fishing out of this boat some, some of my buddy's boats, and I've got a box. That's the exact fall baits that I've been using. Like I'm talking about to a T. They're all the ones I have taken from home with me. So leave me a comment. Should I open that box up and show it to y'all? Might be a good video. It might be interesting to see. I mean, the exact, I'm talking about, it's the box that I just got done fishing tournaments with Saturday and Sunday out of this one little box. Fall secret box. I'll probably open it up, see what's in there. Look at that little on the old Ace. 3S ounce Ace. They're around these little shallow docks and little bass. Fun though. All right, what's going on? Today we're out here on small little local lake. You can see behind me, water's down about four and a half feet today. So that's came up a little bit, but it's the time of the year where there's this brand new bait y'all have probably never heard of called a bass jig. And they eat it this time of year. Really, really good. And you can see I got right in front of me right here. This is the box that I have been taking with me in my aluminum boat, fishing out of buddy's boats, all this type of stuff. This is everything that I've been fishing with in the fall. See, I got some rock crawlers right here, some little johns, some fat johns, buzz baits, toads going to buzz baits, even got my super glue in there, extra hooks. And then all this right here, from here up and around, that's all jigs because that's what they bite this time of year. And usually if you can get some bites on the jig, you can get some really, really big fish. But I've got tons of different ones in here. I mean from rubber skirted ones that I've tied on myself, silicone skirted ones that I've actually cut down to make it like a finesse style jig with small little trailer on back. You can see how much I cut this skirt down, a super thin skirt. I actually caught one that was four and a half on this in a tournament recently, this exact one. I've got a lot of different types of stuff right here. Here's a rubber one that I tied. I put this on an ace head, just a little rubber skirted jig with a chunk on back. So, I mean, lots of different things go in this time of year. And then the jig though is one of the constants. Like the fish are moving, the bait's moving. You catch them on a lot of different reaction baits, but one thing's for sure. This right here is how you're gonna catch your big ones. This is my absolute favorite jig this time of year, right here, just, if I just pick one, it'd be a dirty crawl, ace, half ounce. That's exactly it. I've got one right here tied on. That is a brown rubber with a big chert. Oh, this is a big chunk. That's an ace right there, half ounce ace, but it's got a really big bulky skirt on it, and it's got a big chunk on it. Brown, 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 brown it up. And you see, this is the one that I've caught some on today. This is actually a 3 8 ounce, the one I was just showing y'all. But this is a dirty crawl ace with a little chunk on back. I've caught, just caught a fish on it just a second ago. So, I mean, this is the one that I'm throwing right now. The reason I'm throwing a 3 8 is because the water is low. A lot of these docks are super shallow. But what I wanted to kind of, the reason I wanted to kind of talk about this, oh man, they come up blowing up beside me. Got to make a little cast. Huh. You hear that, Hunter? Did you see it? I didn't see the fish either, but it came up blowing up there super shallow. Throw a jig over to them. You know, these drawdowns a lot of times, they actually get up there and they roam around super shallow on the banks because whenever that water starts to drop, what little bit of crawfish was up there on the stuff that's now dry, they have to run back to the water. The bluegill stuff that was up there shallower, now they're trapped up there along the bank. So the fish get up there really shallow and roam around. That's a really good way to catch them right there. So you can see right there, I mean, that's nothing secret. It's just got a chunk on back of a dang jig, 3 8 ounce jig. And I, I mean, that's what they bite. But the thing I want to talk about was kind of the differences in what you can all do with a jig. Like, like, like I showed y'all, 
<clears throat> this is the exact same head right here. This and this is the same head. Exact same. I mean, th this one's this one's a three eighths and this one's a half. But other than that, same hook. All we did was a different skirt, a different trailer, and he completely changed the profile of the jig. So I like the Ace jig the most. I can skip it around really good. It's got a really good hook in it. It's got a four alt gamakatsu hook in it. It has a really good gap. You can see between the line tie right there and the hook point, it's got a really good gap where whenever you set the hook, it's gonna start digging as soon as you move that jig. So that's one really important thing with the jig, but I kinda just wanted to show y'all how much different things you can do to a jig to make it look way different. Like these don't even look like the same two jigs. Like they look like they'd be completely different. And they, they are for the most part, but not the head, the weed guard, and the hook. That's the same. The skirt is just something different I put on. And honestly, I don't really like one this bulky very often. I put it on here just because if you come to some stained water around some, you know, you're trying to catch a big one, it'll catch a big one a lot of times. But for day in and day out, a little jig like this, this is more of a standard one that I throw right here with a regular skirt, bam. That's what's gonna do you the best. But the reasons the jig starts to play so much this time of year is those shad, they start to migrate into the creek channels. They go to the backs of creeks, they get really shallow sometimes too. But you start to see shad get really, really deep this time of year. I'm talking about 30, 40 feet deep. And what's left on the bank? Bluegill, gizzard shad seem to still be shallow this time of year, but not the threadfin. And then obviously you have crawfish up there shallow. So the fish get up there and roam around and that's one of the last things they got to look for is crawfish. I don't think crawfish are their first choice, hardly ever. I think they would rather eat a thread fin than anything. And then second is probably a gizzard or a bluegill. And then probably their third resort is a crawfish. But if that's all that's around, that's what they're going to eat. And this looks just like one, especially with that brown rubber. So does rubber matter as far as your jig skirt? Sometimes it'll come in handy in life. But right now, you know, you got to pick which one you kind of want to go with. And you can tie on different ones throughout the day, have two or three jig rods throughout the day. But what's the benefits of having a rubber jig over a silicone jig? Basically, the silicone is going to be more snappy in the water. It's going to flare and flare back and move really quickly throughout the water. As it's falling or when it hits the bottom, that silicone reacts really fast. Now, the rubber in the water reacts a lot slower. It contracts, expands, contracts, expands, but it does it at a whole lot slower rate. Let's see if I've got a living rubber one in here. I don't have a round rubber in here right now, just goes to show that that's not what I've been throwing. But round rubber catches them really, really good. It's probably the best rubber skirted jig is just a living rubber. Now, it catches a lot of big ones, catch them around the house right here. A lot of people throw it. I haven't been throwing it this year. I don't know why. I, I really, I'm surprised I don't have one in here to tell you the truth. But I catch them just as good as I do on living rubber or the standard flat rubber on the silicone. I just always have. I don't care how cold it is. The water's 48, 49 degrees. I don't fish in water much colder than that, to be honest with you, very often. It's very rarely colder than 46 or 47 around here where I fish at. So when it gets down that cold, I still catch them on that jig right there. Silicone, I seem to catch them the best on it too, to tell you the truth. Now, I like, I'm kind of a tinkerer. I like to play around in the in my fishing shop or whatever. And I like to tie on skirts and I tied this one on myself. You can see it's got just actually thread that I wrap guides with on there, wrapped around the rubber to hold on the skirt, on, on the head. I like playing with it. To me, it's fun to go fish with kind of some different styles of jigs, fish with some rubber ones, fish with some different colors, all that stuff. It's fun, but as far as confidence goes, it's gonna be this, but that's just the main thing. Yeah, because early in the year, well, not early in the year, early in the fall, I really wanted to have a super small profile. And we were catching some really big spots for a while around on, on this lake right here. Like we was catching a lot of two pound spots, which is a really big one for here. And I really cut down that skirt just because I've always had really good success fishing for spots whenever the skirt looks like that. I just cut it right here, cut around, make it a finesse style. It skips really, really good, has a smaller profile. And whenever it's falling and then it gets to the bottom, it's just a little bit more react, um, a little bit more snappy. Like the shorter that is, the faster it's gonna move back and forth. So whenever the water was a little bit warmer, it did two things. I got a smaller profile, skipped really, really well, but also that little thing right there is gonna flare and snap even more. So does it matter? I don't know, but I have caught a bunch of them like this. And last year I actually caught, you was with me one day in a tournament, and I caught one that was like almost six, a five something. We made a YouTube short on it or Instagram reel on it or whatever. Caught on like this exact jig, like it was one just like this. But I've caught some really big ones like that, and I've also caught 
you know, a lot of big spots. And it just seems to get bites whenever it's really, really tough. The more that uh, skirt material you take out, the more streamlined it looks, the more natural kind of that bait looks. So I kind of thin it out a good bit. And then just go skip it around. Throw it anywhere you think a bass will be. So now we're about to get up and try to catch us one on some of these jigs, which I've already caught one or two on this. But see if we can't catch another one. And if we get lucky and get one to bite this big sucker, that's going to be your big fish of the day. But this right here will catch a big one too. What do you think, Hunter? Think we, think we can get one on video biting a jig? See what we can do. So that's kind of, that's my exact box. You see how simple it is. I've been fishing mostly um, clear water. I do have a black and blue one, which was not in the box, but I have a black and blue one here. I've already got chunks on them just because I'll tie them on, flip them around a couple times, and then, you know, cut it off and tie on something different. So that's the one right there. That's an ace, half ounce, BB smoke, black and blue, with a little bit of smoke on the side, and just a black and blue chunk trailer. So you see how small of a profile that is? Really small profile jig in the winter. Seems to catch them a little bit better for me, but... When, are you going to use black and blue in the winter? Or when do you use I use black and blue any time that water's stained. Any time it's stained up. But if the water's clear, that's the color right there. It's got a little bit of it's got a little bit of green pumpkin in it. Got a little bit of black. Got a little bit of orange in it. But it's a muted down orange. It's not a bright orange at all. It's very muted orange. If you can see it right there on the side. Just a little hint of orange in the water. I mean, just a super small. It kind of just blends in. It's almost, it's not like some jig skirts that have like very bright, bulky, orange strands you can pick out while it's coming through the water it kind of blends into the profile of the jig and just gives it a little tint of orange and that's what i really liked that was one thing that was really important for making this is that color of skirt so my two favorite colors in the ace jig has got to be the donk and the dirty crawl and obviously green pumpkin catches them everywhere you go but today it's all about dirty crawl so let's catch us one can you hear me good when i call You hear that, dude? Oh, the backside of that thing. Oh, just dragging across. Oh my god. Dude, that was awesome. I wish I had the camera pointed at that. That was so cool. That was fun, huh? Okay. So, we literally just talked about the jigs right there. Look at his head. And I, I skipped one dock. Four pounder, four and a half probably. His head is so big. It's a pretty one. Dude, that jig fell like six inches and went thunk. All right, y'all, we're going home now. We did what we came to do. How about that? Get that nice one. I mean, we skipped literally the next dock. Digging. All right, Kyle, question. Yep. Do you know of any mistakes that you see people making or that you make that hinder people's hookup or like fishing a jig or bites in general? So I'll say the number one mistake that people make is overcomplicating it. You know, like I said, the only jig in my box right now is this color and I've got a rubber one also. But for the most part, it's gonna be throw I'm gonna be throwing this color and that's it. I got a ton of confidence in that color and that's what I'm gonna be throwing. So. I just know that when it's time to skip a jig somewhere, I have a lot of confidence that that's the color that's going to get the most bites. And that's why I only have like four or five of the exact same jigs in there. Just in case I lose them, I can just tie on another one. So the number one thing people do, I think, is overcomplicate it. Just about all of them get the same bites. Almost every single jig gets the same bites. This one might get a few more than others, but most of the time, they all get the same bites. So now that's two docks we have skipped and two fish we have skipped, we have caught. So that's it. See, I had him hooked really good, really deep. The, the key to jig fishing is getting you a jig though that's gonna land more than the rest. Got some dock work going on. And like I pointed out in the last one, having that hook point above that line tie is very, very important. And also having the right weed guard so that whenever you make a presentation, you don't get hung up. So that's the properties that make a jig good is you can get it in the cover, out of the cover efficiently, and whenever one bites it, you're gonna land them. So that's it. Though you wanna get a lot of confidence in, which obviously it's this one, cause I have skipped two docks now and caught two bass. So this one catches them. But the main thing is make sure that the, fish, the jig you're using is going to land them. Don't throw a janky jig. Janky jigs are no good, okay? That's gonna be a t-shirt I make. No janky jigs. Ace jigs only, okay? So that's the, that's the deal. Don't overcomplicate it. And also, land the ones that bite. Pretty simple. Let's catch another one. 